Well, I decided when I was in the fifth grade that I wanted to be an artist. One of the earliest um, hangings I made uh, in the 1962 was a Noah's Ark. We, I made it for a christening present, but I also was very interested in the quality of the fabric. And um, I became um, captivated with what you could do to start tearing fabric apart and pulling out hunks of thread and sewing them onto the background uh, to make a, a very um, evocative kind of mysterious um, composition. Here the threads are um, sewn over. It has some little bits and pieces of fabric scattered around on the uh, surface and then uh, heavily stitched over with machine stitching so it's more like a tapestry of machine um, work over fabric underneath it. Uh, I just like to try lots of different things with material. And these were um, decorator samples, uh, lots, lots of odd drapery material and curtain material, some of it very loosely woven. So in a series I was doing in 1964, this was uh, an illustration for a poem by Anne Sexton. Well, I decided that um, I needed to try something hard edge for a change. And so I invented this um, piece called The Game. I like to work in uh, biblical themes sometimes. So this is um, St. Nicholas, who was the patron saint of children and pawnbrokers and brides. Uh, the coins in the lower part are supposed to be gold coins that he would leave for, for brides. When I interviewed my dad, who had grown up in Georgia on a cotton farm, um, he had wonderful stories to tell about his mother, who was a quilt maker, and his two older sisters were still living. They were 90 or so. And... Um, I began to learn family history that I had never known before, having grown up in Illinois when my grandparents were alive. So by the time I finished doing the research, and one of the aunts brought out um, quilts that her mother had made and she had never used, um, that was the hook that got me. But one of the things I read in an early quilt book published around the um, 1960s was um, that you could make quilts out of individual pieces like little pot holders and put the, the backing and the filler in and finish them up, turn the edges in, and then when you have all these little blocks made, you just sew them together. So I thought, oh, that sounds like an easy way to make a quilt. And so I started doing this, and um, this was um, begun right after I finished um, graduate school in 72, and it was a good way to, um, to make a quilt. And later on, um, Georgia Bone Steel started the uh, Quilt As You Go phase on her TV programs, and a lot of people started making quilts this way, but I claim that mine was one of the first in the quilt revival. So again, I was um, learning from past experience, but no one was making friendship quilts at this time in 1972 and 73. Um, so this quilt was something new and it was published in a magazine and um, shortly as the quilt revival got going, a lot of people did make friendship quilts, but I considered that mine was very unusual because nobody else was doing it at that time. And I loved working with these old fabrics and learning so much about them as I put it together. A piece that I had to make for um, a national meeting of the American Craft Council that was going to meet in Tuscaloosa. For several years, I was uh, fortunate to be able to do sample quilts for a manufacturer called P&B Fabrics. This one was uh, done as from fabric that was um, printed in the centennial, the um, 1876 centennial. But it's a charm quilt, and a charm quilt means that you do not repeat any fabric in the quilt. I love working with these handmade, hand-woven, hand-dyed 
indigo fabrics because the, the people who make them are just absolute geniuses. Most of my work is not ever drawn or, or grafted out. I'm just an intuitive quilter and I just cut things out with scissors and lay them out and put them together. So um, it's all very spontaneous.